What's up, bosses? We've got a lot in this week's show, like what you should expect to happen with California's AB5 in 2021, advice from a recruiting expert on how to be successful in this business, a wild video of a hitchhiker's trip on a big rig, and a new fitness challenge you can be a part of. So let's get rolling. Well, we are done with 2020, and it was a strange year to say the least. A lot of the normal experiences we had were put on hold, and that was reflected in Atri's Top Industries Issues survey. Some of the items usually taking the top spots were moved out by those lower on the list. But instead of my vagueness, why don't we just hear from Rebecca Brewster herself? Thank you again for joining us, Rebecca, and you're one of our favorite people to talk to. You're kind of the, the data nerd like myself that kind of looks at all of it and interprets it all. Tell us about the 2020 operational cost survey and kind of tell us what you saw. Well, we've been doing this since 2008, so we've got a good repository of great data through the years. And it's fairly detailed financial data on a whole host of metrics. And then we aggregate and analyze that data to come up with a cost per mile to operate a truck. And so a couple surprises in this year's finding, the cost per mile for uh, 2020, and this is, this is using calendar year 2019 data, was $1.65. And that is a decrease from what we saw in last year's report. So in 2018, um, we were down just about 9% from $1.82. And that surprised us. Now, some of those decreases we expected. We knew the price of diesel in 2019 had gone down from what it was in 2018. So we expected to see that cost go down. The one that really surprised us, Carlin, was the insurance cost per mile. There are a lot of our research is focused on is addressing those rising costs of insurance premiums. So to see it go down in 19 was a, you know, we had to check our math about eight times on that one. We've sort of reached a tipping point in the industry for what fleets can afford in terms of increasing premiums and not being able to go higher, they're taking on additional risk through things like higher deductibles or self-insurance. Those are strategies that help you bring that insurance premium cost per mile down. But in the long run, you may be setting yourself up for even higher overall operational costs uh, if you are in a catastrophic uh, crash. When you look at the operational costs of owning a business, doing everything, what is that one that you're always like, this is just gonna be high? It's either fuel or it's labor. And depending on what the price of diesel is, there have been a couple of years where fuel has gone ahead of labor, but typically fuel comes in number two. Um, so labor, uh, your workforce, is your highest cost. And we break it out in a driver wage cost per mile and a driver benefit cost per mile. Now again, this year we saw a decrease in those, which surprised us because um, when I think about our top industry issues survey where the driver shortage is number one uh, four years in a row, to see the driver wage cost per mile go down surprised us. A lot of that compensation for driver to other types of compensation, like bonuses, we saw significant increases. And in fact, in the average amount paid in a retention bonus in this year's data collection, we saw an 81% increase in that amount over wow. the previous year. Because fleets recognize we need to keep these drivers, so let's put in place these retention bonuses that help keep folks around. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it, and I will let you go. It's always a pleasure to chat with Rebecca and everyone over at Atri, and we've got a lot more planned with them as we head further into 2021. So hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss it. Now over to Isela for some safety info you won't want to miss. Multiple law enforcement agencies in the states of Ohio and Indiana have teamed up to take part in an enforcement effort on Highway I-70. Counties added to the corridor are Henry and Wayne County. This started January the 11th and will continue through January 31st. We are one week in the three week effort. So police is focusing on the following. Dangerous driving, behaviors that could cause an accident, vehicles following too closely, distracted driving, drivers under the influence, left of center, and unsafe lane movements. The Indiana State Police is also utilizing canine units to crack down on transportation and use of narcotics. So make sure that if you are in the area to drive safely. 
Carlin. Now you've heard us talk about California's Assembly Bill 5 before. It's the state's ABC test to determine if a worker could be hired as an independent contractor or classified as an employee. And it's being hailed by some experts as a way to ban fleets from contracting owner ops. Others say it's meant to protect contract workers and grant them benefits and access to overtime. Now while it technically took effect last January, it's been held up in U.S. District Court for quite some time pending a CTA lawsuit. But there could be a ruling any day now. Once that happens, expect to see the impact not just in California, but across the entire nation. Now, Isela, over to you. Our boy Carlin had the opportunity to visit with some good folks from Seat My Truck, Advice for Success. Check it out. We are sitting down with Rob Hatchett. He, you might remember him from My Trucker Life and Seat My Trucks. He actually has something to share with us. His three keys to success behind the wheel, and it's not just driving, it's kind of a all over life aspect. And so, Rob, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, you know, you, you think back over the over the years, I have been to not every single CDL school in America, but I've been to a lot of CDL schools and I've presented to those classes about coming to work for, for my carrier at the time. And so I've made this presentation to new people coming in the industry, to people considering the industry. And of course, as we sit here right now in this, in this driver shortage, we've got to, as an industry, get more people coming in. And we've got to then keep those people once they've come in. And so how do we keep them? Once they're here, what's the key to success for those folks? And so, so there's three things that I think are very, very important for success for that group. Number one is I would tell them, don't stop learning. There's, it's very easy to have hey, got my CDL. Now, now, I'm a, now I'm a professional driver and I know everything. But you know, when you think about when a professional driver goes to the carrier, there's so much more than just driving the truck they have to learn. They have to learn the processes when it comes to the bill of lading, when it comes to payroll. Again, you think about life in general, don't stop learning. There's always more and more to learn. And so that's key for new folks coming into the industry. Second thing I'd say is make sure you understand expectations. And so that is what's the carrier's expectations of you? And then what's your expectation of the carrier? And if we can get on the same page with, okay, you've told me 2,500 miles a week, and I'm gonna get home on Saturdays. If that's the expectation the carrier set, then then me as a driver, I'm expecting them to meet that as well. But also, if, if they've set expectations for me, then then one, I need to know what they are, and two, I need to make sure that I meet them as well. And, and so when we go to that new employer, when we have that new fleet manager, or when a new safety person is assigned to us, it's a good five minute conversation to go, okay, what can I expect from you? What can you expect from me? And then the third thing, which kind of follows up on number two is communication. And again, that's so very, very simple, but how many times in trucking do we realize something happened and, and it was just a communication issue where, right. where a driver was needing to get home, but they didn't send their, their Qualcomm message properly. And so we had a communication gap. And again, these things that I'm mentioning is really a two way street. That's where, um, you know, I believe that drivers are becoming more and more valuable and carriers are realizing, Hey, we got to communicate better to our drivers as well. And, and, and those three things, don't stop learning, understand expectations, and then keep communicating. Again, simple things for all parts of life, but for new drivers in the industry who want to have successful careers, I, I believe those three things, nothing to do with driving a truck there, but those three things are vital to having a, a successful career in the trucking industry. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rob. We appreciate that. We know you're a busy man, so we'll let you get off the line here. But always a pleasure talking to you, and we look forward to talking with you soon. All right, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Good looking out, Carlin, and kudos to Seat My Truck. Carlin, did you say challenge? We have a new fitness challenge looking for participants. Our friend Bob Perry with Esper told us about the Steering Your Way to Better Health contest. It's aimed at testing the strength and conditioning of drivers. It's a virtual event where drivers will be performing as many squats as they can in one in uninterrupted set. Now, there will be separate divisions for men and women and prizes for the top three in each of those. Now, the contest is already running and ends on February 20th. So for more details, you can check out fittopass.com slash steering. Now, he's what else do we have for him? A video of a hitchhiker has gone viral. A woman in Texarkana, Arkansas was caught on video hitchhiking a ride on a Walmart truck. Cheyenne Lynn was in her car with a friend near the Walmart Supercenter on Arkansas Avenue when they noticed a woman on the back of a truck. Fear of the woman falling, Cheyenne followed the truck at a distance. At one point, Cheyenne's friend rolled down his window yelling, hey, what are you doing? Are you crazy? 
but the woman didn't seem to be phased as she just looked at him and turned the other way. It seemed, to have, it seemed as if she had done this before and the driver had no clue. As the big rig continued toward Interstate 30, the woman kept holding on until the truck came to a complete stop at a red light. She then jumped off the truck, crossed the road like nothing. For one, that's very dangerous, and Texarkana police warn people for anyone that is caught doing this, they could hitch a ride to jail and serve up to one year with a fine of up to $1,000. Carlin? What a crazy story. I thought we left all that strangeness in 2020. I'd love to hear what Matt and Joey have to say about that wild video, but this week they have something else to talk about, and that's Matt's new rig. Let's go check it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up to 287 up towards Amarillo. Oh, 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 you got you got your new bro. This your new truck, bro. Yeah, Joey, we got the new truck. Trader James, meet Joey. Joey, meet Trader James. What's up, man? Yeah, put your hand down. Don't worry about it. COVID-19. Six feet, bro. Six feet. Hey, about this truck though. It's not a hood. Said it's not a hood. It's a hood, bro. It's a hood. Look at it. What? This is a hood. What? Bro, you look at it. It's not a hood. It's, it's a hood, man. It's, it's a hood, It's man. not a hood. Listen, I don't care what you say. It's a 4900. 4, Come on. It's taller than me. Come on. It's got all the lights on it. Look, damn thing's taller than me. Come it's, on, Joey. It, it's got a navy theme on it, Joey. Yeah, well, you know what? They're all saying it's not a hood. So it's not a hood. That's what they're saying. So it's not a hood. All right. We're, we're going to run with it. We're, right, we're happy with it. That's not a hood. Look, Joey, Joey. Yeah, Joey, see, that's Joey. not a hood, Joey. That's not a hood, Joey. That's not a hood. This is a hood. That's a hood, Joey. Bro, look, whatever. Good luck with it. I'm happy for you. You finally got your truck. Many miles with it. Chinda, beautiful thing. But it ain't a hood. Well, it was exciting to see and experience Matt's truck. I know he's been waiting for it for a pretty good minute and he's like a little kid you know it's like uh you go into a toy store and you find the toy that you want and you get so hype about it that's matt yep yep and we are excited to see that truck in person because we've seen it just like you guys have in the video so tune in because i'm sure he'll give us a uh, tour of it in person and of course we're going to bring that to you guys now looking ahead to next week here's what we've got lined up for you our month of matt here continues because we're actually starting a new segment with matt we it's are. called matt on the street and he's going to be chatting with a few people out there, you know, chatting with a few of the uh, drivers that he sees, be it at truck stops, at, you know, restaurants, things like that. And you guys are going to want to tune in to see, first, what questions he asks them, and then, two, who it is, because you never know. It could, it could be, be you. you. Yeah. That's right. And then next week, we're also sitting down with the Slusher family. These guys are really impressive. Um, it's a father and son. The father is a driver, and the son actually... Um, went to diesel tech school and so he actually worked his way through school and paid for it by working at a uh, truck wash and now is back home is actually working on his own show truck and is still working at the tr uh, truck wash so it's very it's, it goes to show you know it's not necessarily the generation it, it's all about how you're raised and how you know the work ethic that you have so you definitely want to tune in that it's a great yes. story i really enjoyed sitting down with the slusher family there's some really great people and now he said what else do we have for man him? you already know that the truck boss show has our boss box giveaway so just go to our page on the upper top corner mm, just click that because you could be taking that prize home or actually we could be mailing that <laughs> to you That's so right. you know if you want to be part of our boss box giveaway make sure you click that button up top that's right. And of course, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know, we can't keep doing this without you guys because at the end of the day, you know, it's your support that keeps this trucking along. And it of is. course, why do we do this, Isela? Because you're the boss.